Low Tower Guy friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout. And today was Dynamic Effort Bench Press Day, but just a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below. And let's get over to it because it's going to be a very long video because I did all my side raises and stuff in here. So, uh, speed bench was a little tough today. My delts were really, really giving out. Uh, and it's not pain. I pretty well have the the inflammation resorted over. Uh, no lasting injury. Because we'll call inflammation an injury. Right? If you have several weeks of inflammation that you have to train around, that's technically an injury, even though it's not tissue damage per se. It's, it's still an injury. It's a minor injury. And so we work around it. But my delts have not recovered all their strength and work capacity yet by, by any stretch. And they were really giving out. When I'm calculating off that last big bench PR, uh, the, the speed work, as far as running a really aggressive wave like this with 33% band tension for fives, was hard. Now, it's the first two to three reps were not that bad. As I would get towards the end, I think the last two sets, I couldn't quite lock them. Now, I also probably need to recheck the band tension because my band tension for this had been set for the buffalo bar. And these are further up on the ends. So it might be more band tension than I think. I could end up having 10 or 15 pounds more band tension than I think I do. Uh, I would need to, I probably need to consider rechecking it just to be on the safe side because it might be higher than I think it is. And then again, <laughs> That's a situation, isn't it? I wish I had more mini bands, but you can't really get them. I wish I had more of the, the reds and the blues. But unfortunately, Rogue has been completely out of stock. And I'm trying to be consistent with my brands. Uh, so I don't want to try to get other brands and mix and match. So I wish I had more of those. Though they're a little easier to set for benching, I feel like, than the thicker bands. But I'm at a point where my bench... Speed work requires me to use a thicker one, so I can't just use 80 pounds of tension, it's not going to work. But, again, the delts were really the lockout issue on these, and it tells me a lot. It tells me right now, at this moment, my shoulders are the weak link in my benching. Now, we know my lockout tends to be weak, so we know there's a tricep involvement. So we'll keep hammering my triceps. All right, we'll keep hammering my triceps, but delts are going to get a pretty big amount of workload right now. And we know we need both, and we know we even need more pectoral, even though I'm benching all close grip. We know we need more pec. But the pec will come from all the, the speed benching and the close gripping and the, the rep work itself on all the chest pressing. All right, that will still give me more chest. Delts and triceps are going to get a bigger priority. And you guys saw on that one, I think I only got four, and I know on the last set I was only able to get four. I struggled to lock the fourth rep struggled with it and you know it is what it is uh, again there's there's still some fatigue and weakness in that area although i could be dropping more body fat too at this point actually even looking at my legs there I, I might be so that probably means around sunday and monday i need to carve up a little bit heavy because i want to set prs this coming week i'm hoping i'm hoping my bench will start coming back up now that we've assessed the shoulder situation, we're pretty well on the mend. And we're going to work today on getting all that strength back. Hopefully we're, we're good to go. And then I'm going to get a squat PR this week. I am 100% getting a squat PR next week. And I don't even decided for sure what bar we're going to use. We may do it random still. But I feel like I need to use straight weight on that box. And I need to set a serious PR. We know it's coming. We can do the math and see that it's coming. So I decided to do some more close grip pressing after because uh, it's just what my shoulders needed. I started assessing a couple different lifts to kind of see what felt right. And I'm like, yeah, let me just go with this buffalo bar. It'll give me the range of motion at the bottom. I try to get some tens again with, with this weight. Uh, I wasn't able to get tens on all the sets. I got ten on the first set. And I think the last set I finished with like eight. It's just what I could do. Okay, it's what I could do. Especially with my shoulders just so fatigued. But I felt a little more chest on this, which we should because we don't have the accommodation and it's a little bit longer range of motion, getting about an inch deeper. Definitely felt more pectoral here. Uh, plenty of delt and then a little more tricep, actually. Surprisingly enough, even though the bands aren't there. So, again, 
working on all the weak links. And I know that closed grip pressing is, is going to tell me a lot. And because these were challenging for sets of 10, and this is only 232, that tells me right now, because my last closed grip max with this barbell using this grip was 352, right? Which we saw on camera. 120 pounds difference and sets of 10 are pretty hard. Uh, couldn't even get more than one, especially after the speed work. So we know based upon this, and we know based upon the speed work, that my bench is down. Down just a little bit. But we know this is how we built it back up before. Really it was all this volume work, closed grip pressing, overhead pressing, tons of tricep work. Some floor pressing. I, I don't know. I feel like maybe the closed grip pressing did more. I feel like the closed grip pressing did more for my benching than the floor pressing did. If I really have to assess. And, you know, we can always go back and forth. We can always go back and forth. We don't have to just stick with one. That's the beauty of supplemental work. And that's one of the things that I want to bring up that someone keeps bringing up. Why did you take this out? Okay. In conjugate, we don't take out or add lifts. We do the supplemental work. Does that make sense? We don't take out or remove anything. We try to get certain amounts of volume of supplemental work that seems to be the appropriate supplemental work for that day. It's not adding or subtracting. It's doing the work. We start try to hit certain amounts of workload with a priority towards weaker links. We can oftentimes assess that day to day, week to week. Nothing to do with what we did two weeks ago is, isn't relevant to what we're doing today for supplemental work. We're just getting and doing our supplemental work that we know will give us the development that we need based upon our weak links. Nothing more, nothing less. And then I did my wide grip axle bar presses. I went up just a little bit. First time doing them again was last workout. Went a little bit light. Added a little bit of weight today. It was harder. I felt the extra weight. I uh, did three sets of 10. Now, I did have someone ask, hey, Jason, aren't you supposed to have the knuckles pointed up? Yeah, with a normal barbell. Good luck doing it with the axle bar. Uh, it, it's basically the barbell necessitates certain things differently. Because that bar is so thick getting your hand around it, it's very, very difficult. Like it would roll past your thumb trying to get, get the knuckles up. So, you know, we do what we can with the bar. But in theory, with a normal bar, an Olympic bar or a power bar, uh, it's going to be different, right? You're not going to want to have the wrist cocked back. I don't have a choice. It's awkward to grip the axle bar. Thing's a beast. But I like it. And we won't continue with it forever. We'll rotate different bars around. Like I definitely want to press with my different bars. I actually want to press more with that cambered bar. I'm going to be forced to use a narrower grip on this lift. But the closed grip benching, it'll be interesting. I think that thing's going to be interesting to overhead press with and bench press with eventually. I love that bar for other stuff. I kind of love it for good mornings. And it's not bad for squatting. But we'll use a different bar. So I'll mess with the football bar, bar more later. We'll mess with the straight bar again, the normal power bar. All right. Use the different stuff. Rotate through them uh, just so that we can avoid overuse. See, and when we do that, let me explain how that works. We're not taking the axle bar out. We're just rotating movements in the slot to, again, avoid overuse, avoid accommodation. We don't want to acclimate. We want to keep adapting. And that's minor changes. It's not the muscle confusion principle. You could do three sets of 10 forever and change bars, change grips. Okay, so that we continue to keep adapting all the time to minor changes in training stimulus so that we work all the different muscles fully and we hit different weak links more. And that's the difference with conjugate versus a lot of other strength training systems. You tend to get thicker on conjugate because of the var variation. The same concept that bodybuilders understand. Actually, look at the, the data that's emerging on exercise variation and hypertrophy. Okay, people who do two different exercises for the same muscle over a period of time tend to gain a little more muscle than those who only do one. Right? That piece of data alone 
which does seem to match the experience of bodybuilders. It matches the experience of strength athletes who focus a lot on hypertrophy, like people who run this system. It matches everyone's real world results. And what does it tell you? It tells you something else. That there is no such thing as a best exercise. The best exercise you could possibly do for a muscle would be to do two different exercises for the muscle. All right, but back over to the triceps. I uh, did rolling extensions. My shoulders were really shot. Even on these, it was tough to do these today. I stopped at four sets. I was trying to figure out if I was going to do three, four, or five sets. I stopped at four. My shoulders were just like really pumped, and they're like, eh, we can't handle much more of this tricep work. And my triceps were pretty well beat up. Keeping in mind, we did speed bench, close grip benching, and overhead press. My triceps were feeling probably maximally stimulated by set two. And about four was all I needed. It was a debate of four or five. I'm like, no, four did everything I need. Did everything I need. And in fact, these were a little slower than I like. I like these to go a little faster. But again, that overall fatigue was there. A little more, a little slower. And that's okay. Again, triceps got worked really hard because I felt the triceps a lot today with the close grip pressing. I don't normally always feel triceps on close grip but today I certainly felt them. They were getting a lot of activation uh, and I felt a lot of upper chest and side delt and everything with the uh, the standing press today which again my delts are growing. I think we can see even from that side angle there delts are growing. Now I need to keep growing and I really need to make sure that posterior head and side head and everything come up. And yes, I do band pull aparts quite a bit, at least 10 sets a week off camera. Like I do them after these workouts and other stuff. Same thing, I'm doing some really, really high rep bicep work. I just don't feel like doing sets of 30 on camera with these little smaller exercises that I do outside of the main workouts. Like I'm going to take that axle bar today and probably do some sets of like 30 to 40 reps with it for, for curls. Okay. So I'm, I'm leaving it over. That's why I haven't taken it now. That's why it's still up there. We're going to do that because I, I'm just going to leave it out. I'm going to pick it up and do curls. I'm going to do band pull aparts. So we are going to do this higher rep stuff. But that's that's what I found gave me the best PRs. Guys, look at the best PRs I've hit. The phase is going into them. It's the, again hitting the volume. I've experimented back and forth. Some of my movements I, I do really well with heavy things. But it's just getting thicker and thicker. That has really helped my PRs more than anything else thicker in the right places and as far as the heavy weight goes it's like I've said for a long time we're hitting maxes and then the speed work on top of it but we're hitting maxes every week we're hitting true wonder at maxes every week okay we are getting our heavy work in even though it might not seem like that much when you factor in that we do it every week we max on two exercises every week okay two exercises a week that starts to add up. That is that is heavy work. We're getting our intramuscular coordination. And they're big movements too. Some sort of bench variation most of the pressing days. People ask, why don't you add some overhead? I could add some overhead. I just feel like I, I need the actual chest strength. I need the intramuscular coordination in my pecs too, not just shoulders and triceps. That's That's the only reason why not. And if I want to hit some heavy presses, I can later. If I get really good at rep work again on the overhead press, don't I get a strong max press when I go test it, of course. The bench maxing carries over, though, in terms of the intramuscular coordination. So it's fine. And uh, then we did five sets of 12 on these wide grip inverted rows with the axle bar. Now, the amount of these I'm doing a week is, is really pretty, pretty hefty amount of volume. They're more for grip training than anything. I find that this is really easy for building my grip up very, very quickly. The week after next, I need to hit a deadlift PR. That last deadlift PR, while good, I felt like my grip was my limiting factor. If I can add another 50 pounds to my grip strength, I feel like I can hit some serious deadlift PRs. I really and truly feel like at this point, the way all my good mornings and other stuff are coming up, that grip was my limiting factor. That 625 deficit I did last week was limited by my grip. The grip almost gave out on that movement. 
it's the only reason I couldn't make another jump. Had my grip been stronger, I could have probably made another 10, 15, 20 pound jump. Okay, perspective. Fix the grip. Doing these like three days a week will help. And I might I might switch over and do some some deadlifts with this also in place of it on my lower body days. We might do that too. Just to give my upper body a break. Because we're getting a lot of volume for the shoulders and everything. It's a lot of volume. Especially with the laterals and then the, the pull-aparts and the overhead pressing. My lats get plenty of work from all the deadlifting and then the stuff. I could cut these down to just the upper body days and do, you know, deadlifts with the axle bar. Double overhand. That would also be good grip training. But just keep in mind a lot of this is grip. My lats and stuff are going to grow no matter what. So this is kind of an upper back exercise for me. And a grip training exercise. It's really how I'm using it. Yes, it grows my lats. But everything grows my lats. My, my lats will keep growing. Just movements like this. Deadlifting everything else. It'll continue to grow my lats. And yes, I made a video. It won't be out for a month. But I made a video explaining again lats and the deadlift. Again, in the perspective that we are doing other lat work. Okay. Uh, I took these up to five sets of 20 today. What's, what's kind of my game plan with this? I'm not going to be able to do a lot of variation because I don't have a lot of different stuff that really hit the delts the way this does. I mean, I could get messed with some different dumbbells, but I don't want to buy a bunch of dumbbells. So I feel like with these, I can progress on volume. Again, because it's a smaller movement done at the end. It's a lot of variation with it being isolateral. Every, the, the rep is going to change continually. We're not stuck into a grip or anything. So this flows a little different, uh, but I'm like, every time I can get to five sets of 20, I can go to the next kettlebell up, which is what I did today. I got to five sets of 20. Now, this is a very light weight. That's why I'm able to control it a lot better. It's a light weight. This is a 15 pound kettlebell. So that's why it's like, people see like, man, five sets of 20 seems like a lot. Well, it's a very light weight. We need to remember delts are a very volume resistant muscle. Okay, we can get away with that on certain muscles. Keeping in mind, this is not the only delt exercise I'm doing. I'm doing standing presses. And I'm doing like three sets of those on each upper body workout. Okay, doing rear delt work. Okay, so in addition to all the other pressing and pulling, we are doing a pretty hefty amount of delt work. Delts are going to take a very high priority for me. And that even means when I get to these smaller exercises like this, what am I going to do? We're going to do really high volumes. Really high volumes. Because again, we can argue about the size strength. We can argue about potential ratios depending upon the research of myofibular versus sarcoplasmic growth. But at a certain point, Delt served in a lot of ways a support muscle. And if my front delts are really what's limiting my benching and we can build all the side and rear delt and it helps with blood flow and recovery and support and shoulder health, we still get what we want out of it. We still get what we want out of it. Yes, it's tedious. Yes, doing five sets of 20 takes time. It's tedious. This is a little different than if you just come and crank out three sets of 10 real quick. Right, five sets of 20 takes more time, especially with an isolateral movement. This is time consuming. I mean, look how much time it takes, not even counting breaks, just to add into the workout. But because it's a very, very pivotal part of what I'm doing, we'll discuss it and I'll put it in the workouts for now so that people can see it and we can see what I'm doing with it. See that that's there because if my shoulders are growing, people are going to go, man, your shoulders just grew out of nowhere for no reason. How much stuff are you on, bro? Did you up the dose, bro? When in reality, didn't up the dose, bro. It's going to be all this shoulder work will probably have an effect. Okay? It will have, should in theory have an effect. So over time, it will become more noticeable. It will become more noticeable. So that if we're documenting it as we go, then people won't say, oh man, you just do a bunch of trend or something. That just is not the case. Um, I'm not making any claim of any status at all there. I'm just saying there's no dose upping happening or new substances being thrown into my body that weren't there before that will be causing that change. So people will see the actual shoulder work and understand what's going on. So that there's no, there's no trickery, there's no magic. It, I just came in and did a bunch of work. 
just did a bunch of work for them. Uh, but we see it there firsthand, and no, I'm still not going to put my sled dragging in GPP all these days. As my quads grow and I get more conditioned and my squat goes up, you guys will just have to accept that I probably really am doing sled drags. All right, and leave it at that. It's too, it's, I don't want people to figure out my, my scheduling for it. I don't want to be harassed or messed with. I want to be able to do my stuff in peace. And because I have to drag the sled outside of my home, I don't want to film it. Period. My life outside of the weight room, I don't want on the internet at all. Uh, not at least for the public eye. More private eyes a little bit. It's a little different. And also it's really a pain for me to go out and set up a camera and drag a sled a long distance. Uh, I'm risking a camera being messed with. I'm risking a camera being stolen. Or I'm going to have to elicit outside help just to show a sled drag, which is stupid. You guys can watch people drag sleds all over the internet anywhere, all, anytime. Right? There's no, there's no point to it. There's no benefit to me in doing so. There's only risk. There's only problem so that I can make, what, an extra 50 cents in a video? Okay. I, I just don't care enough. You can go watch someone drag a sled all over the place uh, but at least this it's right here in my weight room it's done in the same workout I've already got the camera set up it's already there we're filming so we can we can throw it in and we can see what we're doing it's it's convenient it's easy for me to con just to show it but again so as the delts continue to grow there won't be any mystery as to what's causing it you guys will see all the you see the wide grip pressing you see the laterals you don't see the band pull apart but my rear delts are growing Definitely my shoulders are getting pumped there. We can see see a difference uh, just in the middle of the sets. But, you know, good workout. Not everything went perfect early on. Speed work was, was really tough today, which that's happening a lot lately. Speed work is hard. Correctly done speed work is very hard. But happy with everything else in the session. I feel it was a productive session, a good session. So I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.